read me romance read read me romance read me romance read read me romance you could take a look in a book that's fine or you could sit back relax and unwind and read me romance read read me romance hey lady listeners it's me it's leah again just me <laughs> so this week, um, Mel's still out of town, so I thought I would just take the reins and handle this one again on my own. You guys were so nice. I really appreciated um, all the sweet messages I got after recording on my own for last week's episode, too. So just bear with us a little bit longer. We really appreciate your patience um, while we're sorting out um, just, uh, you know, unplanned crises, which, you know, which happens when, you know, your moms and you work full time. And, you know, I, I think it's bound to happen at some point, you know, and I was telling somebody today that, you know, uh, we didn't really have a ton of things in place for when uh, like a major incident would happen and like, oh, one of us has to take over. So, hey, uh, we're just figuring this out. So, like I said, we appreciate your patience um, while we go through this, but hopefully everything should be OK and um, the both of us should be back to it next week. But um, but this week, I'm really excited. We've got Sylvie Haas here with us this week. Um, well, she's not here with me right now. What if I did? What if, like, she was underneath my desk? That would be amazing. But no, we've got Sylvie Haas with us this week. Um, she has brought us a brand new audio book called Rolling With My Bosses. And I am very excited to hear this one. It's going to be a personal favorite. And if you did not listen to last week's episode, please go back and listen to Rebel Carter's book, Her Enforcer. It is so damn hot and smutty. It was great. So, um, yeah, do that if you haven't. Make sure you do that. And I also want to do um, a little bit of a correction. Um, two weeks ago, we had an author on the podcast, and I did not realize the entire time I was saying her name wrong. I was saying Melina Jax. It is Melania Jax. Um, I guess whenever I read her name online, you know, when I was emailing her back and forth, I just read it. And in my mind, I translated Melania to Melina. And so that's how I just thought her name was. And then I would listen to the audio book and the narrator pronounced her name. Uh, you know, they said the book when they were reading through it and it was like, oh, this is Alpha Thief by Melania Jackson. I was like, oh, fuck me. I definitely said it wrong. So I just want to correct that and apologize. And, you know, I, I sent Melania an email and I was like, I'm so sorry. I had no idea. And she was so lovely about it. So um, thanks for that. Appreciate it. So I just wanted to correct that. So if that created any confusion with um, lady listeners and her book, Alpha Thief, which was incredible, make sure you listen to that one as well. We've had so many great audiobooks so far this year. So just wowza. Um, so yeah, thanks for listening. We really appreciate it. Um, there are a few things I want to talk about, uh, that we'll get, I'll go over just a little bit before we get into Sylvie Haas's, all her good stuff. Um, the first thing I want to mention is Love is Blonde. I touched on it briefly last week and said that I was watching season six. I didn't think I was going to, um, but I got really into it and then I like ended up getting really, really into it. And so, um, my best friend LB that, you know, sings the, uh, theme song for our podcast. She has her own podcast, um, with a friend of hers, Kayla, and it's called Ooh Girl. Like, Ooh Girl, listen to this. So, uh, so yeah, they actually were doing an episode on Love is Blind and they asked me to come on and it was a real honor. It was the first podcast that I had been asked to be a guest on. So it was a new experience to sort of be on that side of the table. And, um, we had so much fun. We ended up talking for almost two hours about Love is Blind. And I went through like deep dive conspiracy theories on Reddit, all the drama about everything. Yes, we talked about Trevor. Yes, we talked about that. We talked about Jeremy. We talked about Matt and Amber. If you know, you know. So we we dug deep into that. So if you want to listen to that episode and know more about love is blind and all the dirt that we dug up on, um, 
on all the things like again no spoilers or anything like that the final uh the finale with the weddings and the reunion has not come out yet it'll be out next week so um but we made our predictions at the end on what we thought would happen and it's just it's a lot of fun and you know there's uh i, I think there's a little bit that comes out at the end where you know i just can't help myself you guys know like i'm gonna say it like every episode on here and i think i even said it on their podcast men ain't shit so, uh, you know, if that's the energy you want about Love is Blonde, please follow me over there and give that a listen. And then follow their podcast. It is so much fun. Ooh, girl. It is O-O-H, girl. It's just, it's so fun. They do, like, pop culture, um, a lot of true crime stuff, like, just discussing just kind of events of the day, a lot of book talk to, but not just romance books, it's all books. So um, they discussed like Britney's memoir. They had a whole episode on that. They had one on like the um, Prince Harry's book. And then they've had a couple where they've had friends come on and just talk about uh, like, I think their friend Sam came on and she was talking about like self-help books for the year. So there's a lot of different things that they cover and I, I love all of them. Like there's so many fun episodes, but um, so yeah, go check that one out and I'll post the links and everything on social media whenever the episode's live. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is oh, thank you to all the lady listeners that posted in our Facebook group, Read Me Romance Headquarters, to share like your Girl Scout cookie links. Um, our season's finished here, so I went ahead and um, just unpinned the post. It's still in the group. It's just not pinned to the top. But um, we like to, every year, we like to share our Girl Scout cookie links um, for all the other moms that just need a little bit of boost. Um, so yeah, that, that just thanks for everybody for participating in that. Um, this is like my, my eighth year, I think as a Girl Scout mom and cookie season and it's getting old, <laughs> but you know, if you've been through it, you know, like it doesn't get easier, but there's still a little bit of sweetness to it that it's just enough to keep me coming back, I guess. So anyways, just big thanks to all the lady listeners who supported that. Um, and I have another little note on here, and I mentioned it at the first of the year. I was looking for a different app other than Goodreads, and I don't uh, leave reviews or anything. My And my Goodreads private, like I don't share. I used to a long time ago. I used to have like an author one that I would post up all the books I was reading, and I would leave reviews. But I, I, I just feel like that, um, this was years ago, and I felt like maybe that was a little bit, um, a conflict of interest, maybe, like, not so ethical, like, to have an author account and then also review books on it. So, I was just like, you know, I'm just going to separate these two entirely. So, now I have, like, my own personal one that I will... Um, uh, just put the books I'm reading. I don't even review books on good rates anymore, but I just, Goodreads is so annoying to put a book up there, especially if you're doing the Goodreads challenge, like putting in the dates and stuff. And some people like that there are a lot of features and that you can do a lot of things to it. But Honestly, I just wanted an app that would keep up with my books and how many I've read this year. I don't care about anything else. I don't care about them recommending things to me. I don't care about reviews. I don't care about specific dates or anything. I just want to know, I read this book this year. That's it. Give me to the next one. You know, like that. I wanted something like that. So the book app that I tried is called Bookmory, B-O-O-K-M-O-R-Y. I asked about this. Um, I posted it up on Instagram and I said, Hey, if anybody has a suggestion and, um, that was one that somebody mentioned and they were like, it's very simple, very basic. And I was so far, it's a 10 out of 10 for me. I won't use Goodreads anymore. And, um, you know, if you're on Goodreads, uh, I know a lot of people will complain about how they just think it's, uh, it's really toxic. Like some of the, like, you know, the reviews, the environment, that kind of thing. Um, I didn't experience that as much because this was probably 10 years ago, the last time I reviewed books on Goodreads. But each year that I just tried to use my account to like list my books, it was just such a pain in the ass to figure out like how to do dates and stuff. Like you really have to do it on a desktop to make it easier. And then I'll just never do it because I'll forget. So it was easier for me to just use this one. And like I said, so far I've loved it. If you're looking for a change, I would definitely recommend um, that book. It's it, It's got everything I've needed so far on it. So that's been great. Um, even like podcast books and stuff like that, they're all on there. So that's been awesome. Loved it. So 
those were just a couple of things I wanted to mention really quickly. Um, and the Alexa Riley uh, new release is live. Um, it's called Betting on Her. Uh, you can go on our um, Instagram or Facebook page. You can see all the links are available on there on our website. You can get it. It's available on our retailers. Um, I was really surprised it did so well on Apple and Barnes and Noble, like to see it like super high up and Nook and Apple. Like that's just great. It was such a fun book to write. We really, really love the story. It's about a married couple and the husband has kind of kept a secret on how, um, he got together with her. And so it comes out after they've been married for a couple of years. And so it's her reaction to it and then him sort of trying to win her back. And it's really sweet and fun. And it felt like, um, you know, it felt like kind of writing one of our first stories. And a lot of people commented that, that it felt like, you know, one of our older books. And that was, that, that was a nice compliment, I thought. So, uh, so yeah, if you haven't read it, go check it out. Uh, Betting on her, Alexa Riley. And there is a second book. It's going to be a duet, but it's a different couple. And um, the second book is called All In. So you can check that out whenever it's live. We'll post it up. Um, and then as far as book box stuff goes, I'm still working on it. I've purchased several things for the book box. Um, I'm really, really excited. I think I have like one thing left to get that's going to be ordered. And then we just have to wait for everything to come in. And I'm just so excited. I can't wait for you guys to see it. It's going to be a great, great box this year. This might be our best box ever. Like I'm kind of already worried that I haven't ordered enough stuff because I'm like, oh man, these are going to sell out fast. There is going to be a good one. I had just have like this gut feeling. It's going to be a lot of fun. So anyways, let's talk about Sylvie Haas and rolling with my bosses, all her good stuff. Um, I'll read you her author bio, author bio first. Why choose one hero when you deserve them all? That's in her author bio. That's right at the top. I'm like, that's fantastic. <laughs> Sylvie Haas obsesses over dirty talking heroes who fall hard and fast for the women of their dreams. On most days, you can find Sylvie with the wind in her hair, her fingers on the keyboard, and her mind in the gutter as she thinks some new places her characters can get frisky. Sylvie Haas ha is the pen name of USA Today bestselling author who's been an a finalist in multiple romance writing competitions and has been asked to present internationally on writing short stories and novellas. I love that. Sylvie's books are short age gap menage and reverse harem romances that will satisfy you with a light and fun happily ever after. Find your next set of book boyfriends at sylviehaas.com. That's S-Y-L-V-I-E-H-A-A-S.com. Um, this week, Sylvia Haas, Sylvie, sorry, Sylvie Haas has a freebie short um, with eggplant country. I just want to make sure I'm saying this right. Eggplant County Roller Derby Series from the podcast. Uh, so rolling in the elevator. So I'm guessing like this is the series. It's within the Eggplant County Roller Derby Series. <laughs> I'm, I'm dying at this name. Um, so the freebie is rolling in the elevator. Uh, so make sure you check that out this week. Um, directly related to the podcast, it's in Kendall Unlimited, uh, rolling with my bosses. So make sure you check that out for sure. Um, let's see. Uh, she also, also has a freebie this week, which is sparkles and spankings. And I'll make sure to send that link in the show notes. And then she has, um, an upcoming release, which is rolling with my stepbrothers. So make sure you get in on that as well. And again, I'll put these links down in the show notes because these sound so fucking hot. Um, giveaway. There are two winners this week. So she's doing a sign novella of Rolling With My Bosses and some sticker swags. She says she'll ship that internationally. And then she's also doing a $25 gift card. So make sure you do that right. And then um, if you want to know more and follow more, join her Facebook or follow her on Facebook. Like I said, Sylvie Haas, S-Y-L-V-I-E-H-A-A-S. So she's on Facebook. That's where she posts all her stuff and interacts the most. So go follow her on there. Um, so the book you're about to listen to is called Rolling With My Bosses. And I'm going to read you the book blurb for that. One way to get over my daddy issues. Find three new daddies. I'm determined to prove to my father that I can be successful and maintain a fun personal life. I have a plan. But one day before my plan kicks off, my love of fun is put to the test by a future coworker who has me ready to give up my V card. Should I accept his offer? 
Should it make a difference when he includes his two friends? Like I said, I want to prove I can handle fun. If you love dirty talking men that have over the top ideas of how to please their women, you'll want to sneak and <laughs> you'll want to sneak to the mailroom with these three coworkers. So, uh, like I said, you're about to listen to Rolling with My Bosses. Um, and yeah, I'll tell you everything after the audio. I'm just going to send you in and then I'll see you on the other side and I'll just repeat everything so you make sure you got it. Okay. We'll see you then. This is Rolling with My Bosses by Sylvie Haas. Read for you by Mackenzie Cartwright. One. Lexi. The monotonous rows of cubicles suck joy from my heart. Each step takes me further into a drab abyss. Am I prepared for this to be my workplace? I'm just visiting a friend today, which means I have one more day to rethink my plan. The opening to each cubicle reveals a person staring at their computer. Not entirely a surprise for the data entry department, where the only signs of life are fingers clicking on keyboards. Will the mailroom be much better? Presumably, I'll be delivering mail down this very corridor. I make a mental note that while executing my covert plan to work my way up through my dad's company, I should avoid taking a data entry position. I don't want to die of boredom. At the next cubicle opening, the streaks of blue in Beatrix's braids come into view. A surge of joy reinvigorates my heart. At least there will be one friendly face. But that face is currently staring at a computer screen while she types, just like every other employee. The colorful office supplies strewn over her desk and pictures of exotic locations pinned to her wall give me hope that she doesn't completely lose her identity while at work. Surprise! My respectfully quiet greeting goes unnoticed. Of course, she has earbuds in. I step into her cubicle, and the oppressive six-foot walls close in on me. How does she survive? I tap her shoulder. She looks my direction, her eyes go wide, and she sends her earbuds skating across her desk. Jumping from her chair, she offers a hug. Lexi, I thought you started tomorrow. I keep my voice down even though she didn't just turning paperwork in. Hold on. She steps to the cubicle across the aisle and rolls an unused chair into her space. Have a seat. It's going to be so fun eating lunch together and taking extra long breaks. I smile at her as I motion to the enclosure. You could have warned me about my father's aversion to color. I slap my hand over my mouth. It's critical no one finds out my father is the CEO. I'll have to work on not mentioning that. With your mouth, good luck. She raises her eyebrows. My dad has only been loosely involved in my life, and he thinks I have too much fun to ever amount to anything. His passion is his empire. So, yes, daddy issues are at the root of my plan. I figure there are so many layers between him and the common worker, he won't even know I work for him. And I want to keep it that way. I want to earn my place, climbing my way up, which is why I applied for one of the mailroom positions. High school education was the only requirement. I'll take classes in finance and climb the ranks, proving it's possible to have a personal and professional life. And since my dad thinks his standards are above everyone else's, I'm doing it in his company. Beatrix checks the time on her phone, I have a meeting, but if you can hang out an hour or so, there's a place with really good creme brulee nearby. We can stop in before roller derby practice. I love creme. Him. My words falter as I stare at the man who stops in the entry to Beatrix's cubicle. He's extending a manila envelope. Our eyes lock, and his gaze takes ownership of my body. I try to reason that can't happen. I mentally poke fun that his gray eyes are as boring as the lack of office decor. I tell myself I can look away. It's all lies. Dark eyelashes, 
a chiseled jawline, and five o'clock shadow, this man should be a model, not a financial planner. But his black slacks and white button-up shirt make me wonder if he worked here so long that he bought into my father's no-color policy. But I can forgive the boring white of his shirt since he wears it so well. His biceps bulge far more than is required to deliver an envelope. And the thickness of his thighs gives enough interest to his black slacks that he's excused once again for failing to add color to the room. Beatrix reaches for the mail, giving me hope that his hypnotic hold didn't last as long as it felt. He asks, Do you work here? If it's not enough that he's blessed with a body that makes women, or at least me, melt, his smooth, deep voice makes my sex ache. Perhaps I should have put dating in my life plan. Not that I could date someone like him, but the tingling between my legs begs for more than my vibrator and pillow. Before I can find my voice, Beatrix waves the envelope in my direction while she addresses the envelope deliverer. You know everybody's name. Are you saying you could forget my lovely friend? I shoot Beatrix a glare. I would never forget her. He turns to me and offers a handshake. I'm Austin. Considering the impact his appearance and voice had on me, and the complicating factor of his manly scent, which is a combination of leather and musk, how risky is it to touch him? I boldly grip his hand. Note to self, add risk assessor to the jobs I'm not well suited for. He places both of his hands around mine, sending electricity through my entire body. Why would he do a double-touch handshake? I tell myself not to jump to conclusions. His gesture is probably an age gap thing. He's at least 15 years older than me, if not 20 or more. My analytical skills are not functioning well right now. Let's just say he's closer to my dad's age than mine which makes it all the more inappropriate to be turned on. I hunch my shoulders forward so it's less obvious my nipples are rock hard. I stop my thought spiral and introduce myself. I could say that my last name is Smith since it's as plain as my surroundings, but I practice restraint with a simple, I'm Lexi. Nice to meet you, Lexi. Does he actually draw my name out as if enjoying it? Or has my brain gone on a deviant tangent where a man of his age and stature could be interested in a high school graduate who's hell-bent on getting over her daddy issues? The air buzzes between us. Oops, nope. That's Austin's phone. But he ignores it, keeping his eyes glued on me. It buzzes again, and Austin's jaw clenches as he slides his fingers off mine, pausing slightly just before releasing contact. He pulls his phone out of his pocket, reads the screen, and says, It's the boss. I've got to go. Boss? Would that be my dad? Or does he mean a lower-level boss? I had to create a flowchart to learn the hierarchy of the company. All part of my master plan. I keep my reply generic. Don't keep the boss waiting. I'm coming back for you, Lexi. He nods and walks away, texting. I'd think that I imagined his statement, but Beatrix whispers, Coming back for you? I should let it go. I should practice office decorum. I should... Screw it. I roll my chair to the edge of the cubicle, lean out, and watch the gorgeous man walk away. That thought about him being a model... Based on the curve of his slacks over his ass, he should be an underwear model. I make a loud oomph and almost fall out of my chair as Beatrix yanks it back into the cubicle. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Her huge eyelash is bad at me. I can be myself around Beatrix. Yes, you just witnessed love at first sight, and if I wasn't so committed to corporate success... I'd be having Austin's babies within the air. I freeze, listening for signs anyone overheard. I pull my voice down. 
Was that too loud? Beatrix waves a hand dismissively and rolls her eyes. Everyone has earbuds in. It's how we survive. But geez, the way he looked at you? I think I ovulated. I point a finger at her. No ovulating. I didn't include romantic relationships in my rise through the empire plan. I don't want anyone to think I succeed on anything other than job skills. Dating in high school was mediocre at best, making it easy to forget about relationships. She grabs a bright green sticky note and writes something on it with a purple glitter pen. Do you really think you're not going to hook up with anyone, ever? You'll die a virgin. Worse things have happened? I mock indifference. Hold this. I take the sticky note. It has a single letter V surrounded by hearts. She rummages through her purse as she continues, that's your V card. In seconds, she extracts a lighter and sets the paper on fire. Shit, I wiggle my fingers to the edge. What am I supposed? She swings the empty metal trash can my direction, and I drop the flaming paper in. You could have set off the sprinkler system. Would have been a great getting rid of your V-card story. She's such a dork. Who would I tell that to? I watch the last embers flicker on the singed gray edge of the paper. Not my decision. It's your story. She shoves the can back under her desk. You're so thoughtful. Lexi, don't let your plan get in the way of a good thing. Her abnormally serious tone gets my attention. She leans closer and lightheartedly says, And by good thing, I mean Austin. A good thing? How old do you think he is? Want me to tap into the personnel file and find out? Why am I considering this? His age is irrelevant. I'm 18 and he's out of my league. Can you do it legally? That's not for you to worry about. She knows I'm not as big of a risk taker as her, even though I can be a little impulsive. I know the glimmer in her eye. Save your snooping for something important. She taps a finger to her lip. If you're going to have his babies within the year, it's my duty as your best friend to check him out. I try to distract myself by reading the colorful sticky notes on her Kanban planning board. Perhaps my strategy needs amending. In proving that a successful woman can have a personal life, I can consider a relationship. That's reasonable. But with him? I need Beatrix to confirm what just happened. Okay, so I didn't imagine the way he looked at me or what he said. Her smile is too big and too mischievous. I see him every day and he's never looked at anyone like that. But I have to go to my meeting. Promise me you won't leave. He said he was coming back for me. Who am I to stray? Beatrix pats my knee. This is going to be fun. And without another word, she leaves. What exactly do I think is going to happen if he comes back? I make a mental note to grab batteries on the way home. Two, Austin. I pause at the end of the rows of cubicles so I can text more easily. The real problem isn't walking, it's that I can't stop thinking about Lexi. Her name plays over and over in my mind. Her light blue top and skirt with kittens and balls of yarn around the bottom is a relief from this serious atmosphere. So is the ease with which I could lift that skirt. Her voice was cheerful yet timid, like a whisper only meant for me. And the way she blushes, I wonder if she does that when she orgasms. That was a leap. I take a deep breath. Carefully swapping from the CEO's message, I pound out a text to my brothers, not by blood, but by our pasts and our commitments to each other. Do I really think Lexi's the one? She's so young. Can she accept me and my brothers? We're a package deal. If the CEO hadn't texted, I might have taken the rest of the day off to find out. I stretch my neck one way, 
than the other. CEO Smith prides himself on running a company that's fast and efficient, and he has zero tolerance for people who mix personal time into their work hours, thus the clean out of the mailroom staff, and an immediate need to fill all positions. I'm supposed to be part of the solution, not a continuation of the problem. Smith had the genius idea to send me and two other executives, who happened to be my brothers, to work undercover and get a pulse on the office. He wants to know if anybody else is wasting time. His approach has built an empire and created hundreds of jobs, so it's not all bad. But the man could use some lessons on boosting morale. I won't report that Beatrix had a friend at her desk. Faint giggles come from Beatrix's space. I already know Lexi's voice by heart. We could use more of her lightness in this soul-sucking office. Smith would disagree. And maybe he's on to something. I'm not usually one to get distracted. But I'm staring over the six-foot walls that break the open space into tiny cages. What are Lexi and Beatrix giggling about? Did they see my erection before I stepped away? My cock was thick and hard against my thigh, straining against my slacks. I'm on the clock for a few more minutes, but can't focus. Fuck it. My brain's immune to any other thoughts. Would a sweet, innocent kitten like Lexi be interested in a biker like me? Would she be able to understand why I made a vow with my military brothers to share a woman? And are we really ready to commit? I clean up pretty good, which is mandatory for work. But when I'm not in the office, I'm on my motorcycle, rolling down the highway. My hearty paycheck is my security. My bike is my freedom. My brothers are my life. And I think Lexi is my purpose. She'll make us whole. Texts come back from Bear and John that they can take a break. Before I get my hopes up, I need to run it past them. If Lexi is still here, I can make introductions. I'm so sure she's the one. I can't imagine what I'll do if all four of us don't agree. I should also make sure she's legal. Fuck. I've never lost control like this before. Three. Lexi. Beatrix has an office supply addiction. That's the only reason I can think of that explains why she has one cup holding ballpoint pens, one for glitter pens, and one for pencils. And that's just the writing utensils. All in bright colors, much like her purple desk chair. I study her hot pink stapler. Is all of this custom order? Shifting my eyes to the somewhere between beige and gray cubicle walls, I can't blame her for personalizing the space. I make a mental note to move past cubicle life as fast as possible on my grand plan. When making my mail rounds, I'm going to talk to people about how they got to where they are. It might be wise to stay in the mailroom and finish my education if cubicles are the next step up. Look at me going straight from the mailroom to the corner office. Almost as if a timer went off, employees say goodbye to each other. After a few minutes, a cough and a drawer closing are the only hints anyone remains. No Austin. The splash of hope that he was interested in me was fun. Now that I've stopped swooning, logic tells me that he realized I'm the CEO's daughter and he wanted to butter me up to get brownie points with Dad. He can butter me anytime. But Dad doesn't do brownies. I return the extra chair to the cubicle across the aisle, then study Beatrix's Kanban board that takes up a big section of one wall. The bright pastel sticky notes have her tasks neatly organized. I can't resist. Snatching a blue glitter pen from the cup, I write on a new purple sticky note, get to know Austin. I stick it on the to-do section of her board, then add another dream item. Bang, Austin. She'll get a kick out of the note. Which brings me to my lack of sex and why I need to add a third task. Tell Lexi how amazing sex is. 
Beatrix is likely to find out before I do. The sense that someone's stepping close behind me catches my attention a split second before a man clears his throat. Shit. The sense of leather and musk overtake me. It's possible that a big, burly guy like Austin goes cross-eyed in the face of glittery ink and colorful sticky notes. But just in... Crash. As I'm spinning to face him, my arm catches the pen cup, shooting pens at him and scattering them across the floor. He steps to the side to catch the cup, and that's when I notice there are two more equally hot men with him. Heat creeps up my cheeks and down into my panties. Christ, Beatrix didn't tell me guys like this worked here. How does she get anything done? The earth isn't showing any signs of opening up and swallowing me whole, so I better stop gaping and clean up my mess. I drop to my knees, scrambling to reach the pens. That's not how I want you to get to know me, Austin says. So he read at least one of my notes. I look up, and he's extending a hand. Oh my gosh, I'm face to face with his cock. And yes, I mean cock, because it's pressing against his pants. When I fail to move, he motions with the tips of his fingers for me to get up. Touching him is dangerous. I already learned that lesson. Holding up both hands full of pens, I leverage my forearm against the desk so I can stand. I haphazardly shove the pens into the cup. May I? He reaches for a pen. Sure. I scoot the cup toward him and quickly remove my hand. My heart is banging so hard, I lean against the desk to steady myself. He takes a pen, moves the chair out of the way, and squeezes himself between me and the file cabinet. His hard, thick body dwarfs mine. All sorts of tingles race over my skin. Is he going to write his phone number on me? What the fuck is wrong with me? Grown men don't claim women like that. Reality doesn't stop me from wanting him to. There's going to be a change of plans, guys. His eyes remain glued on me, but I suspect he's talking to the two men barricading the entrance to the cubicle. One of the men, I'm not sure which because I've developed tunnel vision, says, what's up? Austin lifts the pen, uncaps it, and I stare at the black glitter tip. Anything to avoid getting lost in his exotically gray eyes. In all fairness, they're a shade of gray that's much more exciting than anything in this office. Do you mind? He asks and nods to the side. The Kanban board. Oh, no. Do I have time to grab the sticky notes and eat them, in case he didn't read them all? I'm pretty sure only unicorns can eat glitter, and I'm no unicorn. Still leaning against Beatrix's desk, I slide out of the way. Austin plucks a sticky note from the to-do section, holds it toward his friends, and says, It seems our little kitten isn't so shy after all. That's the get-to-know-Austin note. He returns it to the middle section of the board, in progress. The guy with a full sleeve of tattoos reaches a hand forward. Pleased to meet you, Lexi. I'm Bear. Austin told us all about you. Bear's huge paws comfort me, even as I'm not sure what all Austin could tell. And I'm John, the third man says as if the name isn't familiar to him. Bear reluctantly allows John to take my hand. I'm poised to survive the contact when he brings my fingers to his lips. He's tender but firm. He lingers. And he leaves me wondering that if his lips feel that good on the back of my hand, how good will they feel on other places? I steal my hand back, shift my stance to squeeze my thighs together, and grip the desk with both hands. The scratching sound of a pen on paper grabs my attention. Austin's writing. When he steps away and recaps the pen, I see that he scratched out tell on my third note about sex and wrote in show. I'm puzzled that he moved that note to in progress, but left the note about banging him in the to-do section. My eyes are pinned to the board as he steps in front of me. 
If I look at him, I'm not sure what will happen. My sense of decorum is nowhere to be found. The willingness with which I spread my legs as his thigh nudges between them is evidence. My skirt rides up. This is wrong. I dart my eyes to his friends. They're stoic, and they're blocking anyone walking past from seeing us. What am I doing? Assessing privacy? That means I'm considering this. But this can't be okay. This? What is this? And why am I pressing into his thick thigh? An orgasm builds shamelessly within me. If I wasn't certain I'm still a virgin, aside from the V-card burning, I wouldn't believe it. It's like Austin and I are made for each other. And his friends? I'm not sure if I'm reading the room right, but I believe they're a part of this. Austin trails a hand through my hair, tucking it behind my ear, then follows strands down my neck and onto my shoulder. Are those all erogenous zones? His lips graze my ear. One of the tenets of our company is efficiency. Let's get to know each other while I show you how good sex is. Knock off two of your tasks at once. It's not a question. I don't have to answer. My hips miss the distinction and grind into him. The rumble of a low growl eggs me on. Then he says, you're already wet, kitten. Do you want to knock out all three? The sound that escapes my mouth isn't a yes. It should be. It's supposed to be. Instead, it's a moan. He sets a finger over my lips. Shh, don't get us in trouble. Where are my morals that should stop me from dry humping a stranger? Scratch that. There's nothing dry about this if he can tell how wet I am. He slides his hand onto my cheek. I need an answer, kitten. All three? Yes, I want all three of you. Tasks, I want all three tasks. My voice escalates and he covers my mouth with his hand. Did I really just make a distinction that I want to have sex with him as opposed to the three of them? He motions for the other two men to move closer. You heard my little kitten. She wants all of us. Um, yeah, no. No, yeah. Didn't I correct that statement? My brain is fuzzy. Is this one of those complicated scenarios where I'm getting what I want, but can't believe I'm really admitting to wanting it? Like accepting a third piece of pie, but with much higher consequences. The brick wall bodies of Bear and John come in handy as they continue to block visibility. Austin steps back, rubs a hand over the wet spot on his thigh, then brings it to his lips. Taking his fingers into his mouth, he groans, then presses his wet fingers to my lips. My mouth is hanging open. I close it and kiss his fingers. His smile melts me as he repositions his leg between mine, this time cupping my sex with his hand. Please tell me, you're at least 18. I'll be anything you want. Oh shit, I said that out loud. He pulls his hand away. I'm serious. How old are you? I've never seen so much tension etched across someone's face. The air stills. This is really happening. I'm 18. By a week, but there's no need to bring that up. His chest heaves. Had he stopped breathing? What if I was still a minor? I count my blessings that I was born two weeks early. Gah, why am I thinking of that? It just makes me that much younger than them. In that case, the note says to show you how good sex is. There are a lot of ways, so we better get started. Never mind that he amended the note. He returns his fingers to my sex and massages them over my panties. Since when am I so shameless? It's like he knows me better than I know myself. It feels so good. It usually takes me so long to warm up. How can I be, oh fuck, the orgasm is bigger and longer than I've ever managed.
I lose track of the world. But they catch me, or Bear does. I'm snuggled into his chest when I drift back. The other two men stand in front of us. Austin reassures me. We're going to take good care of you, kitten. I'm not sure what that means, but it needs to happen before Beatrix returns. It nags at me that I wasn't totally honest about my employment. Would it matter? I'm sure it would to my dad. Father, please forgive me for disgracing your workplace. I shove my biological dad from my brain. I found a better kind of daddy. Four. Austin. We'll be fired if Smith finds out about this. Yet I'm not letting kittens slip through my fingers. My dick is so hard I'm not sure I can ride my motorcycle to get her home. Assessing the closest place we can have privacy, I say. Let's move to the mailroom. The what? Her eyes widen. Either that or we'll take you home. John looks over the cubicle wall. Beatrix is on her way back. Little kitten wiggles in Bear's arms. Put me down. He sets her on her feet and kisses the top of her head. We won't say a word. Beatrix is talking before she rounds the corner. Lexi, are you? I'm fine. Kitten lunges for the Kanban board, rips the three notes off, and shoves them in her purse. I was just goofing around. And we offered to show Kit, Lexi, the mailroom. I motion for the guys to exit the cubicle. Beatrix steps out of the way. Oh, you told them, Kitten cuts her friend off. Yep, told them I'd love to see the heart of the company. Without good mailroom staff, nobody's happy. That was odd. Is she that eager to go with us? I follow her out of the cubicle. Beatrix calls out when we're halfway down the corridor. What about the celebration dessert? Can I get a rain check? We're interrupting a celebration? Okay, what about roller derby practice? Beatrix is clearly confused by her friend's behavior. I'll meet you there. Crap, she just put a time limit on us. But Beatrix doesn't let up. Should I order takeout? I'm so focused on making Lexi happy. I forgot she has a life other than right here. I stop her from answering. Are we ruining your plans? Trust me, this is an easy one. She looks over her shoulder and calls down the aisle. Take out won't be necessary. Beatrix smiles and shakes her head. She must get the hint that we've made Lexi a pretty good offer. When we're safely locked inside the mailroom, I say, if we have our way with you, derby practice won't happen. Why? You can't keep me here forever. You won't be able to walk. Oh, which is why we're not going to do that other sticky note. Kitten's brow furrows before she casts her eyes to the ground. I can't believe you saw those. I tuck a finger under her chin. I'm glad I did. But we're moving pretty fast. We should sort a few things out. Like? What are you supposed to be celebrating with Beatrix? Nothing important. The blush creeps over her cheeks. Bear steps closer and tucks a finger under her chin. Lexi, don't lie to us. What are you celebrating? Can I tell you tomorrow? As long as you tell us in person. In that case, I'm on board with tomorrow. And what about takeout? Are you supposed to eat dinner with her? I ask. Kitten nibbles on her lower lip before shaking her head. It's nothing. Bear loves food. Dinner's not nothing. We'll feed you. You don't have to do that. John steps in. You're ours now. We'll take care of you. Kitten's eyes go huge again. This has to be a lot for her to take in, which is one of the only reasons I'm not already fucking her. That reminds me. I meant to address this. Kitten, Lexi. The three of us have seen too much chaos and swore women off because we couldn't guarantee we'd always be there for them. But lately, 
we've been exploring the idea of sharing a woman. Between the three of us, we'll know she's always cared for. We have each other's backs, and we'll have yours. Is that something you would consider? Five. Lexi. Um, share me? Moving fast? My brain is short-circuiting, so I let my impulsive heart lead. Okay. John's eyes fall shut and he drops to his knees. Caressing both of my thighs, he orders, lift her shirt. Is that necessary? Kisses on my belly prove it is, making me all fluttery. He tugs my panties to the side, moves his kisses lower, breathes in deeply, then says, Somebody better cover her mouth. Bear's hand lifts to my face, but he stops. Hold on, John. Let me get behind her. A momentary shuffling has Bear's wide body supporting me from behind and his hands caressing my arms while John repositions himself. Have I lost my mind? Why do I feel safe with them? They locked the door, didn't they? Who has a key? Why don't I care about any of these answers? The beige walls and rows of mail sorting bins slip from my mind as I prepare for Bear's hand on my mouth. I lick my lips. His right hand trails up my arm, stopping on my shoulder. His scent, their scent, I can't tell them apart, intoxicates me. I've never considered skipping derby practice before. Angling my nose away from his hand, I force my eyes open as I inhale deeply. This isn't a dream. This is my future workplace. And future co-workers. A tongue dragging up my thigh sends shivers through me. Reality check. Focusing on manila envelopes with a fastening string hanging from each one, I remind myself that working in the mailroom could have me facing these men every day. And worse, these men might know my father. They're closer to his age than mine. Austin says, you okay, kitten? John sits back on his heels. My panties sort of right themselves. He adjusts the final bit. I lower my eyes to meet his. The power washing over me at the sight of a man kneeling before me is wild. Say the word and we'll stop. The word? Did we establish a safe word? No, I wouldn't have forgotten that. You're in control. The sincerity in John's voice is unbelievable. No judgment, no disappointment, no immaturity. He cares about me, which is more than I can say for my exes. But what if these guys are players? Older with lots of practice. No, Beatrix would have warned me. In fact, she encouraged this. Well, the Austin portion of this. John's hand slides down onto my sparkly Keds shoe. Resistance is hanging on by a torn shoelace. Thread after thread breaks free. The pressure of Bear's hand slides over the top of my shoulder. His fingertips toy with the dip in my collarbone. Then he slides his burly hand around my neck, his fingertips getting just enough leverage to angle my head up to meet his gaze. What is it, baby girl? Are you ours? My daddy issues bubble to the surface. They're the reason I'm in this building. I seriously need to phone a friend or run down the hallway to her cubicle so she can pinch me. I want things I've never wanted. Things that don't align with my heroic plan to climb the ranks of my dad's company to prove derby girls can be successful too. Fuck it. I'm a derby girl. I harness my inner badass the persona I reserve for the track. John said I'm in control, yet I've never felt so on the verge of total surrender. I just have one question. Why me? A vibration rumbles from Bear's chest into my back. His hand tightens around my neck. My hand flies up, grabbing his muscular forearm, and he abruptly relaxes his fingers. I already miss the pressure. I've never put myself totally at someone else's mercy. Austin says, go easy, Bear. She asked a simple question. 
His fingers flex and gently encircle my neck again. Leaning his lips closer to my ear, he says, Baby girl, I want to be your daddy. What just happened? My mind replays the sound. My breath hitched. I shuddered. My eyes fall shut. Embarrassment, surrender, prayer, everything. We are made for each other. Austin's voice drops an octave but rolls out just as smoothly. We'll take care of you in every way, kitten. John's voice drifts up from below. We swore an oath to each other. It's not easy to explain. So we hope to show you by example. I'm sure there's something else I should ask or demand or consider. I'm sure that if I just take a second, I'm sure of nothing. One of Bear's hands remains on my neck while he runs his other fingertips down my arm. His tips press between mine, splaying my fingers wide. The air rushes out of me. My sex aches with need to be stretched tight by one of their cocks. None of my boyfriends elicited such a primal response. I'd thought something was wrong with me. I never wanted to have sex. But now? What have I become? John's thumb slides onto my inner thigh, so close to my sex, so close to entering me. I rock my hips and my knees bend slightly. My body has no reservations, but he slides out of the way. My mind, I beg it to get on board. How can you know I'm the one? You don't know anything about me. Bear tightens his grip on my neck. Possessive, not choking. How can an orgasm build inside of me when no one's touching me there? Baby girl, are you going to deny how your body responded when I said I wanted to be your daddy? I shake my head, then admit what you want. Swallowing under the pressure of Bear's grip, the final strands of the shoelace snap. I want to be your baby girl, Daddy. What was that Beatrix said about controlling my mouth? He shifts his hand, positioning me for an awkward kiss, but it's perfect. Long, deep, and controlling, before he pulls away and slowly grins. All three of us. All three. John's breath warms my sex. Let's lock this in. Bear's hand covers my mouth, but I tug on his forearm. He lets me guide his hand back to my neck. Baby girl. The steel rod of his erection presses into my backside. I can't sort out what is making me more needy. Please, Daddy. When he hesitates, I slide my hand on top of his and use my tiny fingers to tighten his grip. Teach me, Daddy. Austin stands a pace away, and if I trust my peripheral vision, he rubs a hand over the front of his slacks. You're so fucking perfect, kitten. I don't know about that. My plans are falling apart at record speed. The only thing that's still certain is that I was poised to make a big change. Austin takes my hand that's intertwined with Bear's and touches something metallic to it. Bear releases my fingers so I can grip the object. A set of keys. You won't be able to talk. If you drop the keys, we stop. Yes, Daddy. I assume it's okay to call all of them Daddy. We went straight past a safe word. Austin stares at me intently. I'm going to watch this round. There's an unstated message. I can't explain how I sense it. He's going to make sure I'm safe. The warmth of John's tongue sliding between my untouched lips sends me flying to the point of no return. I'm losing track of where I end and they begin. I can't keep my eyes open. I can't use my legs. One of Bear's arms tightens around my waist while his other hand tightens around my neck. I can't breathe. I don't need air. I just need them. The ball of ecstasy building inside of me explodes so hard it hurts. Good, bad, indescribable. White light engulfs me. Am I losing consciousness? Suddenly air rushes into my lungs before I realize Bear's hand relaxed. My body demands that I breathe. 
There's a rush of something beyond my orgasm. I'm at peace. I've achieved perfection. I'm drifting through uncharted bliss. Bear's hand drops to my chest as he leans back, supporting my body on his. All I have to do is exist. The beige walls offer no sense of time. I'm cradled in Bear's arms while Austin runs his fingers through my hair and John massages my legs. The keys remain clutched in my hand. Austin tries to take them, but I clench my fingers tighter and murmur, I don't want this to stop. Just rest for now, kitten. Relaxing my fingers, the keys jingle as he returns them to his pocket. My eyes fall shut again. When they reopen, I suspect I fell asleep, but the guys haven't moved. John's smile meets me first, then Austin's and Bear's. That guides my eyes to the wall clock behind Bear's head. Oh, shoot. I have to get to practice. You didn't completely blow her mind, John. She still remembers practice. I didn't want to ruin her, John says. Bear snuggles me closer. I plan on ruining you. Nuzzling into the button-up shirt that hides his firm pecs, I try to stop my smile. It's pointless. Being ruined by him or all of them sounds like fun. We'll take you to practice, Austin says. You've done enough. We've barely started, kitten. I just moved to town. This is my first practice with the team. I have to be focused. I don't want to make a bad impression. Austin kisses my forehead. That would be impossible. Tell us where it is, and we'll drive. My car is here. I appreciate the offer, but I can drive myself. Are you sure? John asks. You were having trouble standing. A laugh passes through all of us. I pat Bear's chest and let my fingers linger. Do I feel a trace of chest hair? I can't wait to see these guys naked. I yank my hand away, startled by my own realization. I'm going through with this. I'll make room in my personal life to include whatever this is. Mustering confidence, I smile. I'm driving myself to practice. Then I'm going home. I'm going to need my rest. You said we can see you tomorrow, baby girl. How do we get hold of you? Don't worry. I'll find you, Daddy. This has been Rolling With My Bosses by Sylvie Haas. Read for you by Mackenzie Cartwright. This has been Rolling With My Bosses by Sylvie Haas. Read for you by Mackenzie Cartwright. This has been Rolling With My Bosses by Sylvie Haas. Read for you by Mackenzie Cartwright. And we're back. Thank you so much to Sylvie Haas for bringing us Rolling With My Bosses. Thank you, lady listeners, for being here and listening to this awesome audiobook. Um, I just want to let you guys know, again, um, check out the short novella in the Eggplant County Roller Derby series. Um, it's related to the podcast book. Um, it's NKU. Um, so just check out that whole series. Um, the freebie this week is Sparkles and Spankings. And then she has a new book that's coming out soon, Rolling with My Stepbrothers. And again, I'll have those links in the show notes. Make sure you enter this week's giveaway and follow her on Facebook for all the updates that I have probably messed up in some way. But I'm trying my best, guys. I really am. I swear. <laughs> so up next week, we have a great, we have an awesome book. It's from Sky Warren. She's given us the audio and it's called Better When It Hurts, which is going to be filthy and wonderful. I just know it because Sky's books always are. So make sure you join us back here on Tuesday. Remember to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. That really helps us out. And follow us on Facebook, Instagram, all the fun places. So we'll see you there. All right. Uh, oh, I almost forgot. Fuck your day up. Make today your bitch. Don't be a dick. Bye, guys.
read me romance read read me romance read me romance read read me romance you could take a look in a book that's fine or you could sit back relax and unwind and read me romance read read me romance